I pray. I pray. Father, we thank you for the gathering here this evening. We thank you, dear God, that um, you have brought us where we can again feast on your word. We thank you, dear God, for Pastor Roy. We pray, dear God, that as you enlighten him, you will be able to pour out to us. May we have our minds open. May we have ears that we may hear as you speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so we are in the book of Revelation and we're in chapter 3. Minds open. I trust that as we get into it, we all will find something here for us. Uh, we are going to do the first six verses. So I'm going to ask for two readers, each person reading three verses of Revelation chapter 3. I will read first. And to the angels of the churches of service write, This thing says, He who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works, that you have a name that are only that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, all you have received and heard and hold fast. And hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not block out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before the, his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. So this is church number five. The church of Sardis is the church of the Reformation the time of the Reformation, from the year 1517 to about 1750. This period of time in church history is called the Sardis period, or the time of the Reformation. Before Sardis, we saw the church that was oppressed and the church that Compromise, the Church of Compromise that came through the Middle Ages and God had to allow the plague, which was called the Black Death, to wake up the church. So for many, many centuries, Europe was plagued by the Black Death was worse than COVID. And many many in the population died. Two thirds of the population of Europe alone was wiped out. Coming out of that, the church revived. We have the period of the Reformation, at which time many churches or denominations broke away from Catholicism. It was during the time of the Protestant Reformation. We had great church leaders like Martin Luther and people like Zwingli and Huss and Jerome. All these came out of Catholicism and they were protesting or rebelling against the Catholic Church that had become steep in paganism and Roman tradition. And so out of these different groups, 
we had different denominations. We had the Lutherans, we had the Methodists, the Hussites. They all came in the saddest period. And so the angel is now taking the letter to Sardis. Now, as I said before, Sardis was actually a literal place where the church existed, but it also represented a period of time in the history of the church where the church went through coming out of persecution and coming out of death. The church experience a reformation, a changing its posture towards the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the angel is writing to Sardis. And what did the angel describe about the authority of the message for Sardis? How did the angel underwrite or the messenger underwrite the message that he brought to Sardis? Anybody, how did he authenticate the message? He said, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Aha, uh -huh. who held the seven spirits and the seven stars? Anybody? Jesus. Jesus. God. Jesus. God. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. John in chapter 1, he saw Jesus standing among the candlesticks, right? And in his right hand, he had seven stars. Yes. And he had the seven spirits of God. What does the seven spirits of God represent? Was it completion or perfection? Well, seven represents perfection and completion. But the seven spirits represents the wisdom of God, the total wisdom of God, the complete wisdom and knowledge of God. And the seven stars? The leaders. Yes. How many of us remember that? The leaders, the leaders of the seven churches. So Christ is authenticating the message. He's underwriting the message to say it is legitimate, it is genuine, it is authentic. And what does he say he knows? Their works. He knows their works. Notice this is a repeated clause in every one of these letters. I know your works. Just as he spoke of the people in Sardis, he's speaking of us today. He knows what's going on with us. He knows everything. Because he's all knowing. I have a name too. He knows what he says he knows. That thou has a name. You have a name. That says what? Is that a repetition you're about? Yes, you have a name that you're alive. What does that mean? You have a name that you're alive, but you are dead. Let's see. You know what came to me with that? I had a name. I was a Christian, right? Uh -huh. I was alive, but disconnected, dead. That is what came to me. <laughs> That's what came to you, okay. So they have a name to be alive, but they are dead. Remember, the church that Christ formed became the church of the empire, the church of Rome. Through Constantine, the church was legitimized. Constantine ended the persecution of the church. And he embraced the church and used the church as a unifying force to keep the empire together. 
So now the church enjoys the blessing of the state. And because of this, the church became reputable and many people were flocking to the church. The pagans were also coming into the church. It was during that time you had a compromise of doctrines and teachings. So the church became polluted. This was the church. The church of Jesus Christ became the Roman Catholic Church. Rome was ruling the world. Catholic means universal. And they are saying, well, we are, we are doing church. But many people broke away from Catholicism because it was practicing spurious teachings. Martin Luther wrote a 95 page, page, a 95 point thesis with 95 different points that spoke against the teachings of Catholicism. And he left Catholicism as a priest one who once propagated Catholicism, after studying the word of God, he recognized that the church was no longer what it was designed to be. And he stepped away from it. And the church used the arm of the state to try to persecute him, try to kill him. And they did not succeed. But the church carried a name as though it was alive, but the church was dead. So it does not matter what the church says about itself. You know, you see all type of titles to churches? Some church takes a name for, it, for themselves. But did God give them that name? Did God give them that reputation? Some people take upon themselves certain reputations and certain names. And the names give the semblance of though they are alive and walking with God, but they are dead. You have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. This message is not only for the period called Sardis. It is for us individually today. Do we just have a name? Are we taking the name of Christ, but we are not living for him? Is Christ the ruling factor in my life or not? Without Christ, then I am dead. Just as Jesus said in his day, let the dead bury the dead. The priests on day they were dead while thinking they were alive. They had a name in Israel, the rabbi. But as far as God was concerned, they were dead. Any thoughts? On those one. Any questions? So, um, Pastor Roy, that the um the seven spirits, um, is it referring to like Isaiah eleven, where they talk about um a root yeah. coming out of the stump of Jesse, right? And um, yeah, he, he have the spirit. He the spirit. That, but, yes. We referenced okay. the last time we spoke of the seven spirits. Mm -hmm. and they all resided in that one root. Mm -hmm. Right. Jesus Christ. Okay. So, so Christ had complete wisdom, complete knowledge, complete understanding. And then, right. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. So all is not dead in Sardis. Right? Amen. Amen. So Sardis is not hopeless. So there are few that remain, but they are not far from death. <laughs> are you seeing this? Yeah, they're yeah, dying. They're, they're dying. They're ready to die. 
ready to die. They are spiritually degenerating. For I have not found your works perfect before God. So the few that are almost at the door of death, spiritual death, Christ is now speaking to them. Those who are ready to die, I have not found your work perfect before God. So remember, remember how you have received and heard. May I ask a question? Have you received anything? Have you heard anything? Yes. Well, so, so that means, have you received, mm -hmm. when you received the word and you heard it, and you, you, you heard us pass to it, now you are sure it, so you ask you to repent and come back. Ah, because they received something. They heard and received the word, the life, but they're ready to die because they did not hold fast what they received or what they heard. Mm -hmm. That's why faith comes by hearing, not having heard something. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. And hold fast and repent. Like the songwriter Andre Crouch said, Take me back to the place where I first believed. Take me back, dear Lord. Hold fast and repent. Remember what you received and heard. The warning is very, very stern, as warning is very applicable to us. What warning do they receive? If you will not watch, in other words, pay attention to what you have received and heard. If you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. What does that mean? I will come upon you as a thief. No point in time. You would not know when the time would be. When the time would be for what? What is being suggested here? Christ return. Remember Christ return. That, um, one of the Gospels, right? He reminded us that same, the same um, passage of Scripture. You may not know because I might come like a thief in the night, right? Yes. And that that he first says second. Is he is he speaking of his second coming here? No. Mm -mm. He's no. not. Okay. No. All right. No, he's telling the church there right now. In Saturday's time, if you do not watch, if you do not repent, if you do not hold fast, I will come upon you as a thief. And you will not know what hour I will come upon you. What does that suggest? Death. Huh? Death. Absolutely. Absolutely. Death will come to you without a warning. You have a name that you're alive, but you're dead. You're ready to die, so you better hold fast, otherwise you will die. That's the implication. If you don't hold fast and repent and keep watch over what you have received, death will come upon you like a thief. And you will not know when you die. Because the dead know not anything. Sister Bully? So, Pastor, is that a physical debt or a spiritual debt? Both. Both. I have another question. Does that mean that when that happened, you're not converted? Because um, Luke 22, 32 says, um, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. 
and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Does that mean that they are not converted in that state? No, it, it does not mean that. Hmm. That he was speaking specifically to Peter there. Okay. And, uh, you know, most people don't know what converted means. What does converted mean? Anybody? Spiritual redemption. Restoration of God's book. Is it the same as re-imaging? Yeah. You're muted, Pastor. Life is totally sold to Christ. Converted means Christ is now running the life. On to TV control, yeah. You're not, you're not running on Adam. You have converted to Christ. Amen. You have passed from death to life. It's a different operating system. See, people don't understand what converted means. People think converted means, well, you just change your behavior. No. Converted means you used to run on one system, but now you're converted to another system. Mm -hmm. At one point, self or Adam is running your life. Now Christ is running the life. Right. So, so that way I ask that question about if they are converted, if they are converted, if um, he say, I will come to you as a thief, mm -hmm. and then the sentence will be death, spiritually and physically. So well, it, did not say, it, will, it did not say it will happen to them. He said, if. Mm, if, right, if. That's mm -hmm. the condition. Mm -hmm. That's the condition. Okay. So, as you will see, it may have happened to some people, but the church continued because the church went into another period called Philadelphia. Are you following me? Yes. Yeah. So as a whole, as a whole, the church is going through these different stages and different things are happening. But there's always a remnant of people who are serving Christ. So he's telling those who are almost dead, hold fast, repent, otherwise death will overtake you. And you will not know when it's coming. Because death does not give a, a, a courtesy call. How do we know it continues? The next verse tells us. Uh, I am unique God masterpiece, divine design. Go ahead. So, so Pastor, I have a question. Um, we know the church go through these different periods. Mm -hmm. So, and the church today, we know the church in the Laodicea state. But is it still, even though it's in Laodicea stage right now, mm -hmm. it still have some of all these issues still going on in the church? Absolutely. Even though it's at that stage. Absolutely. Okay. So Sardis was a literal church. Then Sardis also represents a period of the church, as I mentioned earlier on, from 1517 to 1750. But it also represents the elements of the church is still present in the body of Christ today. All the elements of the seven churches are present today. There are many who are carrying the name of Christ as though they are alive, but they are dead. They may be making a lot of noise in church, but they are not really connected to Jesus. The persons, in spite of their state, they will still give them a chance to repent and, and change their ways. Yes. Yes. But notice, there's a few of them who are very much alive. Yeah. yeah. Verse 4 says, you have a few names even in Sardis, the church that has many who are on the brink of death, 
and the church that is really a dead church spiritually. There are many, a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. What does that mean? Defiling their garments. Well, they have not gone the way the, the, part, you know, the, the majority of the church went. You know, they keep the state of holiness. What is their garment? belief in Jesus Christ. Their heart. Uh, yeah. This, yeah. yeah. Their heart. Yeah. Their heart is pure. Uh -huh. their heart is pure. And you're talking about spiritual adultery. They yeah. have not made it spiritual adultery. They have not committed spiritual adultery or divorced themselves from Christ. Right. They remain so, faithful. <laughs> watch this. The Bible says there are many who have not defile their garments. Could somebody find for me, please, Galatians 3.27 and then someone else find Romans 13 verses 13 and 14. Maybe I'll look for one of those. I have Galatians 3.27. Okay, what does Galatians 3.27 say? 327, right? Yeah? Yes. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You have done what? You were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. So when a person is baptized into Christ, not into a religion, but into Christ, they have done what? Put on Christ. Put on the put garment. On Christ. So Each. what's the so what's their garment? Christ. 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 They have not, they have not defiled their garment. Mm -hmm. Christ, okay. Uh, mm. Not Christ, oh. Mm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> There's another text. Romans 13. Mm-hmm. Reading verses 13 and 14. Could you see my Bible? Yes. yes. Let us walk. Let us walk how? Properly. Let us walk perfectly. Properly. As properly as, as in? The day. The day. The day. The day of the revelation. Not in the... rivalry or drunkenness. Huh. That means spiritual rivalry and drunkenness. We are not overtaken by the cares of this life. Hmm. Not in lewdness and lust. Hmm. In other words, don't defy the garment. Mm -hmm. Not in strife and envy. And envy. Hmm. But do what? But, um, so, but put, put on, on the Lord. Put Jesus. on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ. What's your garment? Jesus the Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Mm. Amen. Put on the Lord. Lord. So there, uh, there were a few insiders who did not soil their garments. Mm. Amen. In mm. other words, Jesus was everything to them. They did not compromise their faith in Jesus Christ with all the spurious teachings that came into the body of Christ. Mm. Mm. There were a few held on to Christ as their only hope of salvation. Mm. That's what the text says. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make what? No. No provision, no provision. for the flesh. No, for the no flesh. provision for the flesh. In other words, do not to set up. The law. In mm -hmm. other words, do not set up scenarios where your flesh could be made manifest. Compromise. Um, mm. Sometimes it may not be the sin yet, you know, but you set it up. Right. So it huh. Jesus. So make no provision for the flesh to fulfill it later on. Hmm. Right. To fulfill its lust. In hmm. other words, keep your garments. As many as were baptized in the Christ have done what? Put on Christ. Put on Christ. And we are told here now to put on Christ and make no provision for the mm, flesh. Right. So you have a few insiders 
who, the Bible says, did not defile their garments. Pay attention. And what Jesus say about that? They will walk with me. They will walk with me in white. For they are worthy. worthy. What does he mean by walking with me in white? Purity. Hmm. Perfection. Perfection. Yeah. Character. Mm -hmm. the, in other words, their garments, the life of Jesus Christ is their total salvation, the total package. They shall walk with me in white. What is this walking with Christ in white? Here's an interesting scripture. Uh, go to Revelation. Let me show it to you here. Revelation 19. And I'm going to read from verse 5 just for our benefit. Let me show it to you. Christ said they'll walk with him how? In white. They walk with him in white. Here's a revelation. John said, verse 5, Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of great, a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, as the sound of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah. My God reigns. Is that guy who sings that song? Mm -hmm. Pay attention. Let us be glad and rejoice. This multitude are those who are, be, who are saved. And give him glory. Why? For the marriage of the Lamb has come. And right. his wife has made herself right. ready. Right. Amen. Amen. Who is the wife of the Christ? We are. We are. Mm -hmm. Christ said of those in Sardis who did not soil their garments, they will walk with him in white. That's his wife. <laughs> what mm -hmm. is he talking about? That's his wife. He's taking bride. her down the aisle. His mm -hmm. wife, yes. He's our husband. That's our husband. He's <laughs> taking her down, taking them down the aisle. They'll walk with me in white. They'll be present okay. at the marriage of the Lamb. Her wife has made herself ready. In other words, her, her, his wife I'm not has, soiled. Has, a, has not soiled her garments. Amen. Yes. Amen. And to her, his wife, who is the Lord. church. Uh, that's the church. <laughs> Is granted to be arrayed in what? Fine linen. Fine linen, clean and clean and bright. bright. Something clean and white. Right. Hallelujah. No soil. For the fine linen is the righteousness or the righteous acts of the state. Amen. 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 Then he said to me, Right. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true sayings of God. Amen. So the few in Sardis would be among those who would be walking in white. Yes. At the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. What a privilege. What a privilege. Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who are invited to be present at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Notice, they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Verse 5, he who overcomes shall be clothed in what? White, white, garment. white linen. White. Notice that because they kept their garments, Christ says he will now clothe them in white. That's his own righteousness. Mm -hmm. They kept their garment. They kept Jesus Christ as the reality of their life. So Christ says, I'll now clothe them officially with white garment. 
and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I will confess his name before my father. Amen. And before his angels. Mm -hmm. Notice. This is what Christ says he will do. Mm. How do we know these messages apply to us? Because mm. of the last the last sentences, each one of these messages. Oh, he who has ears to hear, to hear. Let him hear. Yes. What Christ is saying to the churches, he's saying to you. Yes. Amen. You he's saying to me. After every message, we have this statement. He mm. who has an ears to hear. So it's not just for the church of Sardis. It's also for us. Hear what Christ is saying to the churches. Any questions? So Sardis represented the time of the Protestant Reformation from 1517 all the way down to 1750. Pastor Roy, good evening, excuse me. Um, do you consider that now that we are in this age of technology, um, um, I don't want to say new age because I think we passed new age, have we? Anyway, um, would you say that this is also a reformation? Because we... They have a new name for it. The Reformation was the reforming of what the right. church was like. Right. Now, the next phase of the church, the next phase of the church is what happened after that. The Church of Philadelphia. Yeah, but uh, I know we're in Laodicea. Uh, well, yeah. But so, it was not, so what you're asking me, that was a Reformation? If how we our time now uh -huh. in the Laodicean state uh -huh. are we are we also being reformed because um granted that so many different things yeah. have happened in our uh, they call, they call our age they call our yeah. age the age of the enlightenment. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. When all these great scientific things are happening. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's, yeah. let's move on to, let's see if we can hit the next church before we get to 7 o'clock tonight. Let's see, we have 13 verses. Okay, we're going to take uh, three readers. Um, each person read four and the last person read five. I'll read. Yes, let me get someone who hasn't read. Who said I'll read? Berlin. Berlin, okay. Read the first four. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened and no man shut it, and shut it and no man opened it. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not defiled my name. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay. Next reader, please. All right. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillow in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. 
I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Wow. The Church of Philadelphia. This is the time of great revival, the Great Awakening, 1750 to about 1925. So we're coming down closer and closer to our time. It was a time when there was great revival all over the world. A great awakening to religious fervor. What do you notice here at the Church of Philadelphia? The church is holy. Ah. Uh -huh. No, no, wrong. Sorry. What do you notice? Okay, let, let me let me start from the top. How did Jesus Christ authenticate the message to Philadelphia? How was the message <laughs> underwritten? He who is holy. Yeah. These are the words of him. And he hold the keys, hold, hold the key of David. Key of David. You know who David was? Yeah. Yes. Who was David? Prince. King David. Who was David? King David. No. Let's try to say he holds the keys of David. What does that mean? Would <laughs> um, that be the lineage of Christ? He holds the keys of David. What key did David have? Yeah. What key did keys David the have? The key of the kingdom. The key of the kingdom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is that key? It opens and shuts. <laughs> His lineage. His lineage. <laughs> The authority, Jesus' authority, the ultimate authority. Okay, very close, very close. Oh uh, yeah. The key, the key of David is Jesus. It's Jesus. Well, okay, that's what I was doing. Je Jesus was going to be born of the seed of David, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. He is the key to the kingdom, right? Amen. So the key of David really is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He has the key of David. He is the key to the kingdom. He opens and he shuts. Yeah. He could open up the kingdom and he could shut the kingdom. He could open doors and shut doors. Mm -hmm. He opens and no one shut. He shuts mm -hmm. and no one opens. Mm -hmm. So if Christ put you in the kingdom, who could put you out? No one. <laughs> All right. The same is also true. If you get out of the kingdom, nobody can put you in there but Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's how he authenticated the message. What does he know? What do you notice here about what Christ knows? He knows, he knows the deeds. He, know, he, he knows their works. Yes, but what do you notice about his knowledge of their works? Open door. I know that you have little strength. strength. <laughs> yet... You have uh -huh. kept my word and have not my name. What do you notice? And he knows my word. The kingdom. One, 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 one other time. What What do you notice? They kept. They kept. They kept my word. Okay. And he has not denied my name. Okay. What else do you notice? It's an that open. He said he will come quickly. He said, I will make no. them the synagogue of Satan. Why you say that? He oh, said, they have Jews who are not. They have an open door <laughs> that no one can close. Yes, he said all that. But do you notice he had nothing negative to say about them? Right. right. That's right. No. This, is said, the only, this is the only church period where he never said anything negative. 
Did you notice that? Yes, that's true. I think you're giving them words of encouragement. Yeah, but in all the other churches, I know that you have. He had he had something against them. But here he has nothing against the church of Philadelphia. So okay. Pastor, Pastor Roy, you said we have remnants of all of these churches. So this is we have remnants here too. Of course. Amen. Of course. But it's very good for us to notice that there's nothing negative against Yeah. You. I know your works. He didn't tell them to repent or anything like that. He said, I know your works. So this is the time when they revive the life of Jesus Christ at the center of their worship experience. All the revivals that were happening across Europe and that spread into the United States. Many people coming to Christ. I see you. I know your works. I set before you an open door. And that open door gave access to many people to come into the kingdom of God through the evangelization of the world. It was an evangelistic time and an open door for the gospel to go and nobody could stop it. I have said before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength. You have kept my word and you have not denied my name. Encouragement. He's encouraging them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who mm -hmm. say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to mm -hmm. know that I have loved you. Mm -hmm. Amen. The synagogue of Satan, those who compromise the doctrines, mm -hmm. those who promote immorality, spiritual and moral, I will make them come and worship before your feet. In other words, the spread of the gospel will be so dominant that people from different uh, religious affiliations will start embracing the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Because you have kept my command, to persevere, I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on earth. As it was then, so it is now. To the Philadelphians who live in these days, God says, because you have kept his command and persevered, he will be with you in time of trouble. He will be with us because trouble is coming upon the whole earth. This reminds me of my favorite scripture that God has given to me in Jeremiah 45 verse 5. He says, are you seeking good things for yourself? He says, don't seek them. For I will bring adversity upon all flesh. But I will give you your life as a prize. Adversity Amen. to the earth. But ad adversity doesn't intimidate the Philadelphian. Mm -hmm. Because God says he will keep his children from the hour of trial. Amen. Because trial is coming upon the whole earth. But God promises to keep his children. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. Hold on to the life of Jesus so no one will take your crown. And what's his promise? He who overcomes, 
I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. What does it mean to be a pillar? Strong. Mm -hmm. It projects strength. Strength, yeah. And it projects stability. And stability, yes. I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. Mm -hmm. People can lean on you because you're strong. Amen. He shall go out no more. You'll be in my house permanently. The house that Jesus Christ is building. The temple of God. The body of Christ. You are a pillar. I will write on him the name of my God. What does that mean? If the name of God is written upon you, what does that mean? Feel. Huh? He's sealed. He's sealed. Unmovable. Hmm? Sealed in the land life. So what does it mean to you? Oh. Nothing can touch me. I'm untouchable, yeah. Invincible, immovable. I am God's I am God's personal property. God's name belong is belong to him. I belong to him. Yes. Mm -hmm. What a privilege. You belong to him. So no matter what the devil brings against you, it can't succeed. Amen. Amen, glory. I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. I will write on him the name of God and mm. the name of the city of my God, mm. Jerusalem. In other words, you already have a place in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some people waiting for it to happen in the future. God said he'll do it to you now. Mm. New Jerusalem, which comes down from my God, from heaven. And not more than that, on top of that, I will write on him what? Name. Right. My name. My new name. My, my name. Yes. Man, could you imagine getting all that? Mm. The name of God on me, the name of Jer New Jerusalem on me, the name of Christ on me. Hmm. What a honor. Mm. Amen. Triple honor. That's right. Then he says, if your ears is good enough to hear, you better hear what I'm saying. Mm. To churches. Mm. Because this is for you too. That's right. What an awesome God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Roy, I have a question, Pastor Roy. What's your question? And he said, and I will also write on them my new name. Mm -hmm. That no man knows what it is. Yeah, what, what is that? Okay. In the, earlier, in the earlier verse, he says, I'll give them a new name that no one but he who has the name will know. Oh. Hmm. That's where I was looking at. Wow. These, That's these letters. Yes? Hmm. And we say when they talk about, um, he said, thou has had little strength. It doesn't mean that they were weak. It, um, they were depend. They were dependable upon him. Um, I like that verse. For you have little strength, so this it does not apply to um weakness, but it's a it's real strength because they, they was depending upon his strength. It but is not a matter to. of great strength, and uh, not not a bit not not great ability, but great dependability on the spirit of God. But you know, they, they have been, the, the Church of God has been fighting against the forces of evil. Mm -hmm. And so it's, faith, huh? very, it's very exhausting. Mm -hmm. But they, they came through and they held on. Mm -hmm. They kept the word and they did not deny the faith. It means they came through. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they have little strength left. Yeah. But they, but they are on. faithful. Yes. But they are faithful. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. looking at the same verse. I was looking at the same thing. They had little strength, but yet they were faithful. 
they are holding on for their life. That God will reward so, them. Though, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Like right. And God will reward that. Yes. Amen. Amen. Wow. This is awesome. Very awesome. Amen. And God is God is supporting all these. Even though he, he rebukes some of these churches, he's giving them a promise. Yes. You know, if you overcome, this is what I'll do for you. Yes. If you don't lose faith, this is what I'll do for you. Hmm. Hold fast. Don't let anyone steal your crown. Hmm. Stephanie? Pastor, that strength that they were holding on with, was that the strength of Jesus? What strength is that that they were holding on to? Their, their little strength was their faith. Faith, yeah. Faith, yeah. So all these yeah. bad things were happening, but they still had faith? Yeah. They held on. They just knew that God was going to come through for them. They held on. They believed the promise. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You see, they did not allow the distractions of the, their situation to overwhelm them. Yes. Satan uses the physical to bring distraction. Our strength is in the spiritual. See? Because Satan knows that the spiritual is stronger than the natural. And so their faith laid hold on their relationship to the life of Jesus. Though they had little strength, they kept the word. Though Christ had little strength, he pressed on to Calvary. It's the whole mark of Jesus Christ. Yes, Stephanie, go ahead. That's it. Can you just give a simple, quick illustration of that, what we're talking about? Just something simple. Illustration of what? Um, overwhelming things, but holding on to a little faith. Okay, I just, I just cited Jesus Christ. Uh, Job, was one, Job was also like that. Paul, all those who went through trials for Jesus Christ, they were exhausted. If you read the the uh, Fox's books of book of martyrs, you'll see how these saints, how they were persecuted, but people held on. Okay. Their physical strength was not there, but their faith was always there. Mm -hmm. You see. So yes. it's not talking up about your the faith. The faith is strong, even though physical strength is gone. Uh huh. And some folk, when they become physically exhausted, they're ready to give up because they don't have that faith. The spiritual strength is not there, and so in the face of adversity, they melt away. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. I I I I understand you. Thank you. You're welcome. Jessica? Yeah, Pastor Roy, one time I was uh, really just questioning the Holy Spirit about how am I going to go through all this persecution? And, you know, the Holy Spirit said to me, it's not, it's not you. See, this is me separating, you know. Mm -hmm. You're not going through it. I am. It's the life of Jesus. The life of Jesus. And once you center yourself in that, the strength comes if you if you separate, then you're gonna be like I can't do this because it's the flesh talking. That's but right. when you, so that's what the Holy Spirit said to me. Yes, and I, Paul, that, Paul puts it. Paul puts it this way: We yeah. are finishing what remains in the suffering of Jesus Christ. Jesus only lived for thirty three years on the earth. We are living the rest of his life. That's what we are doing right now. We are the seed of his life. 
Amen. Amen. So the Bible tells us in, in Romans 8, you know, or 2 Corinthians chapter 4, sorry, that we will experience in our flesh the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. so that the life of Jesus will be manifested through our mortal bodies. And what happened during the time of persecution is the more they persecuted the Christians, is the more the faith of Jesus grew. Yes, amen. <laughs> so they tried to kill it by persecution. It didn't happen. Remember the 10 periods of persecution. Before we came to the time of Constantine, Satan tried to stamp out the church by killing Christians, but he recognized that the more he killed the Christians, the believers, is the more the, this, the life of Jesus grew among the people. And so through Constantine, he did not do persecution. Pay attention to this. If you read the book that I wrote called Unshakable Kingdom, I explain all of this. When Constantine came, he recognized persecution did not stamp out Christianity. He saw Christianity was very strong and unifying and going stronger in the face of persecution. And he saw in Christianity then the opportunity to unite the Roman Empire that was falling apart. And so instead of persecuting them, he joined them. And he gave them access to Rome. But it was a different strategy with Satan now. What happened, the church was no longer a living organism spreading all over the place. It was now contained in buildings. So from persecution, Satan's new strategy was institutionalization. So when the church became the church of the Roman Empire, you had a Roman institution controlling the growth of the church. Priests and prelates determined how the church would go. And so after they were institutionalized for centuries, then the Reformation came to the saddest period. And when the Reformation came, what happened was from institutionalization, Satan now had a new strategy, was religious confusion. Because out of the Reformation came different institutions, different religious institutions. They learned how to contain the people in Rome. And then when Martin Luther left from Lutheranism, he used the same structure to control the people. And so we get institutionalized religion. And then you have denominationalism coming out of that. Luther had his own. Calvin had his own. The Wesleyans had their own. And so you had different institutions now controlling the growth of the body of Christ. It was no longer an organism. It became an institution up to our day. So what Satan is doing now, from persecution, he went to institutionalization. Now he's using religious confusion. Let them multiply the denominations, multiply the institutions, so the institutions can control the religious experiences of the people. So it's no longer Christ controlling the experience, but the institution controlling the experience. That's where we all came from. Are you following me? Yes. 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 But the church of God is not an institution. The body of Christ is not an institution. And you will see with Laodicea, the institution, the church is now institutionalized and they're locking Jesus out of the institution. That's where we are with Laodicea. Wow. So when Christ sent, when Christ allowed COVID to come, was to break the back of institutionalism. And he's not finished. Amen. I'm just telling you in advance, he's not finished. All right, Berlin. Okay, when they ask the question in verse 10. 
it says, question. because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. What is the or hour? Trial. 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 Testing. Okay, testing. Which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the, the earth. Are those the unbelievers to try the unbelievers? No, to when test upon everybody, to test everyone. This will come upon the whole world. They will keep thee from the hour of the trial. So which shall come upon all the world. Absolutely. To try them. Who is the them? Is the whole world? The whole world. Uh, which shall come. Okay. Right. To upon test the... those who dwell on the earth. Mm -hmm. Those who dwell on the earth. I will bring adversity upon all flesh. Mm -hmm. But I yes. will give you your life as mm -hmm. a price. Okay. So, so I was looking at the life of Jesus. We are not in the flesh anymore. We are in the spirit. And Colossians say our life is hidden with Christ in God. Yes. He was in which are above. So right now our spirit is sitting at the right hand of God in Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wherever so Christ body, we are so because we are in spirit. So, 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 so we're talking about our flesh. Our dwelling place is in heaven right now. We are from above, not from below. Yes, yes, my sister. But here's here's <laughs> here's here's the deal. Okay. Our confession, hmm. our profession, will all be tested. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's our positional right authority. But we have the functional authority right here. Mm -hmm. The test whether our profession mm. and our confession is what it is. Ending up, yes, yes. Christ says, test yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Remember that scripture? We spent yes. a whole time on that. Examine your own self. Don't you not realize it's Christ in you? So right. the test that come to us is to make manifest the life of Jesus. Right. That's what made the church go back then. Right. And that so, will be a shining light now. Right. So um, so we'll be tested until the flesh die and Christ alone reign, right? We'll be tested until Christ is manifested to our mortal right. bodies. So so that will be still for those who are tested and how to put it? Um there's no more there's like, like Christ when, when Christ said there's he couldn't he, couldn't, he didn't find anything in me. Yeah, but but he went through a test too. He went to yes, the world. Yes, yes, yes. I know we will go through that test too until oh, that. Absolutely. Yes. yes. But God said he will keep you during the time of the test. Right. But we okay. all will go through the test. Yes, we all go through that. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Mr. Keith and then Jessica. I, I think, you know, one thing we need to bear in mind is that salvation God has guaranteed our salvation and many times I know coming from our different religious background there's there's always been a fear of time of trouble and what we, how you're going to stand up and all that kind of thing but I think our the revelation of the life that we have in Christ this born and live life in Christ that has already overcome the world that has already overcome once we stay true to that that life in us the life of Christ in us it's already a victorious life. It's already a successful life. So yeah. we need no need to be fearful of if we're going to fail or if no. The life of Christ has already been overcome successful, has already overcome. Yeah. So so we yeah. also remember, before, we're not trying to overcome. Tests will come, but guess what? The life of Christ has already passed the test. So once we stay yeah. grounded in that, our salvation is guaranteed, folks. What is fearful is the flesh. So the exactly. Flesh not, so, <laughs> so never forget about, it. It's the flesh that is fearful. Exactly. The test is not about us. 
Right. Life. The test is not about us. Mm -hmm. It's really about Christ because Christ is yes. our life. Man. Amen. Amen. So when the test comes, if you try to face it as us, then we have a problem. But this is all about Christ. There's no longer me or I. Christ is now manifesting his life in me. And every test is to, for that life to manifest, not for me to manifest. Amen. Because me will Amen. say, Lord, I don't want any test. I don't want me, it. I don't want that. Me will run, want. me will run, run, run. <laughs> so, so what's happening now, we have to get used to the confession of who we are so that when anything comes, Christ will show up, not me. Not me running and crying to God and telling God, why me and why you allow this to happen to me? No. Leave that for people who don't know who they are. And this is why every day we live in the reality of who we are from God's perspective. We are now the life of Jesus Christ in the world. Our physical bodies is just the house through which Christ manifests his life. And it takes use, it mm -hmm. takes discipline, it takes discipline remembering this every day so that when things come at us, we don't face them in the identity of our natural Adam life, but we face them in the identity of Christ. So what is Christ doing in this situation? What is Christ doing here? What is Christ doing here? I'm taking Christ to work. Christ is going to work in my body. Christ is riding the bus in my body. When something come at you, it's coming at Christ. When Paul was persecuting the church, what did Christ say? Persecuting me. Why thou me? Yeah. So when somebody is persecuting you, who do you think they are persecuting? Christ. But we, some, we don't see it like that. Mm -hmm. And we're going against the person. It's not about you. It's not mm. about me. God sees Christ. Notice what we just read. I'll put my name, the name of my God on him, the name of the city of my God, New Jerusalem on him, the name Amen. of Christ on him. Amen. Not the name of me. Not Ruth and Roy. The devil doesn't want us to, to hold on to this reality. And me is always scared. Scared mm -hmm. because there is no power in me. Power is the life of Jesus. Amen. And we keep repeating this over and over again until it becomes the norm, the normal way of thinking for people. Because you weren't born with this. You have to be born again with it. And the world does not speak this way. That's why we cannot take our direction from the philosophies of this world. It does not speak this way. This world will conquer everything that is of this world. Mm -hmm. But a life that is not of this world cannot be conquered by this world. It has already overcome this world. Amen. Thank you very much for your contributions today. Pastor Roy, I have a, lo a little question. Circling, can I ask you sure. quickly? Circling back to Sister Verlin's question, since you have kept my commands to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on, coming upon the whole world to mm -hmm. test the inhabitants of the earth. I, I don't understand the rapture. I hear people talking about the rapture. Is this, does this have any reference to that? No. Okay. The Bible does not talk of any secret rapture. Okay. When Christ comes, it's not going to be a secret. And it's not going to take people away in secret. So, Pastor Roy, that song, Two Men Walking Up a Hill, One to Spend, the other left standing still. <laughs> yes. Jesus did say that, but what does he mean? 
It simply means one of them would be lost and one would be saved. Okay. Two people would be sleeping in the same bed. It can be as close as that. It doesn't guarantee that both of them would be saved. Okay. One would be taken and one, one would be taken uh -huh. and one would be left. It didn't mean Christ did not mean that I'll come and suddenly take one and the next one will remain behind. More up here. So, so there is no rapture. Don't believe no. the movie. There is no secret rapture. Okay. There is a rapture, but it's going to be a universal rapture of everybody. The dead in Christ shall rise first. At the coming of Jesus Christ. Not before. Thanks for your question. All right. I thank you for your time this evening. And uh, trust that this was a blessing to all. We are going to have prayer and I wish everyone a wonderful week. Walk as a Philadelphian and let no one take your crown. You have the name of the Father, the name of the New Jerusalem, and the name of Jesus Christ on you. You belong to God. Hallelujah. Just remember that. Amen. Three times over, you belong to God. That's right. Because God's image is in you, you belong to him. That's don't right. Nobody else tell you differently. Don't let the devil tell you in your mind anything differently. Amen. Know the truth about yourself. Amen. 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 God be praised. Amen. Amen. Could we have a volunteer for prayer, please? Give God praise and thanks. Father God, we thank you, as always, for your love towards us. We thank you for the opportunity that you gave us today to, to grow in you and to be more confident as we understand more and more, as we receive the revelation more and more of who we are in you. We thank you, God, that as we read these scriptures, we realize that our confidence in you, nothing can take you out of our hand, for our lives are hidden with Christ in God, and the evil one cannot touch us. Help us to live from that place, knowing and having confidence in who we are in you, and knowing that we are safe in your bosom. As we continue to grow in grace, but we are all coming to that revelation as we continue to grow in grace. Keep us as you've always have and will always will. As we continue to draw this rest of this night, keep us safely, we pray. And may our light, the light that comes from you through us, be a blessing to draw men and women to you because of the light they see displayed in us. This is my prayer for all of us tonight. In Jesus' name, with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Have a good night, everyone. Good night, good night everybody. Good, good night. night. Good night, everyone. Good, good night. night. Good 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 night. Good